I finally got a bookshelf for my office, as you can see. I built it the other day. I actually filmed myself building it. It was like a catch up, chatty, build a bookshelf with me. You know what happened when I went to import that footage? I hadn't connected the microphone, had I? So that's all silence. But I figured, you know, at least we can fill the bookshelf together and I've made sure the microphone's definitely attached this time. This is the IKEA Eka Ekanabin bookshelf. I actually have two, I have another one as well, but I didn't want to build the second one until I knew I needed it. So we're gonna fill up the first one, see how much space I've got, and then maybe I'll return that or maybe I'll keep it until I have more books. I literally have so many books around me right now, look at this. Books everywhere, so many books. These have all literally been sitting in my office on the floor for like the last six months since I switched Oh, well, maybe I'll put this back up since I switched my office and the spare room around because I took my bookshelf that I had in my office downstairs and I was like, oh, I'll go to Ikea and buy a new bookshelf. Six months later, I finally did it. So here we go. I have no idea how I want to organise this. I do quite like the idea of like colour coded bookshelf, which I know is a little bit overdone, but I think it looks really pretty and I'm trying to make my office look good. But one thing I definitely do know I want, so I want to have one shelf that's just all the books that I still need to read, like the books on my current TBR list. Because if I put them in with everything else, I just forget they exist, I won't read them. So we're gonna start with that because the first book in front of me is The Hearts Invisible Furies by John Boyne. I really want to read this. I picked it up a few times to read it and I just get so intimidated by it because it's quite chunky and I know it's quite a heavy subject. So I really, really want to read this. I will get around to it this year. I'm definitely reading this book. I think we just put all my TBR on this bottom shelf. Also, excuse the fact if you can see soil all over this. I had a plant on it and there's nothing my kitten loves more than getting in my plants and digging out all the soil because he is a terror. A Scatter of Light by Melinda Lowe and With the Fire and High by Elizabeth Acevedo. I need to read both of those. I have The Manning Tree Witches, I have Seven Days in June by Tia Williams. I picked this one up in a really cute little bookshop in Brixton not too long ago. Very excited to read that. I got sent this one, Angels by Rachel Churcher, which I need to read. I've got Harney and Issues Guide to Fake Dating. I've got so many books I currently need to read. Um, oh, hello. Nevada by Imogen Binney. Again, this is like one of my next ones I really want to read. Please stay upright. Nick and Charlie by Alice Oseman. My sister actually gave this to me to read eight years ago and I just haven't yet. And I think off the top of my pile, they're all the ones that I need to read still. Oh no. Oh God, no, I've still got loads here. Oh dear. The House of Impossible Beauties. I have The School for Good Mothers, Las Beauty Queens, so many. The House of Impossible Beauties is another one that I picked up because I was like, I really want to read this. And then every time I open it up, I'm like, oh, so many words, such small text, such a big chunky book. And um, this is about the New York City ball scene in like the 1980s, I think. And I'm so into that. Like I want to learn everything I can. It's sort of like based on true stories, but also like not really. Really want to read this. I'm just, I can't bring myself to do it. <laughs> And The School for Good Mothers by Jessamine Chan is one that I picked up thinking like, oh, I'm gonna love this book. And then I heard some reviews of it and it wasn't at all what I thought it was gonna be. So I might even sell this one on. I don't know if I actually want to read this. Oh my God, I think literally this entire pile are all books I need to read. I have Gay Bar by Jeremy Atherton Lynn, which is about the history of queer nightlife in the USA or around the world, USA. I really want to read this. Devotion by Madeline Stevens is one that I've had on my shelf for ages and I made the mistake of looking this up on Goodreads and it got terrible reviews. So I actually might put this one to one side and I might sell it. And you know what? I might do the same with The School for Good Mothers. I might put the, both those on vintage just so they can stop looking at me and I can stop feeling guilty about it because I cannot hack the guilt. The Curfew by TM Logan. I picked this one up in the charity store for just two pounds. Can you believe? And Deliver Me by Elle Nash. I got sent this one as PR not too long ago. And again, I really want to read this because it sounds really interesting. Oh my God, Saw Kill Girls. I started reading this. I got like a hundred pages in and then I was like, you know what, life is short. This is not worth it, not worth it. This is also going on Vinted if anybody wants it. Don't recommend, but you know, you can buy it. God, every time I think I'm done with like my TBR books, I just find another one, but this is... The Death of Mrs. Westaway by Ruth Ware. I'm currently trying to work my way through every single Ruth Ware book. 
I also have Her Name in the Sky by Kelly Quindlen and I really want to read this book because I've heard so many incredible things about this but I hate this like the actual physical book of this it's like one of the American like really floppy covered books and the text is just so hard to read I don't know if you're gonna be able to see it properly just the font of this book is really really weird and like my eyes just can't make sense of it so I do want to read this book but I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna download it on Kindle and I'm gonna keep this like physical copy as well so for the moment I'm gonna put it on my TBR but also I'm not gonna read this because this actual copy is it's not good I actually have a flight on Monday I'm going to Boston so I might even download it for one day for my Kindle because I wanted to read it for so long I just I can't I can't I can't do it also by the way I'm very fresh faced and also my hair looks a bit fancy because I had my wedding hair trial this afternoon and I think it's cute I think I like it like it's got like a little plait here and we did have some like little pearls in the back but I don't know if the curls are like sitting right I don't really I don't know like they looked really nice when I first got it done but I feel like they're dropping funny so I don't know what I'm gonna do about that but yeah oh my mum's calling me hello right I think I'm gonna need to lift you guys up and we're gonna start from the top and I'm gonna try and do a rainbow type thing I think we'll see how I feel about it I'm really unsure how I feel about this hair guys oh help me like is it cute from the back I just don't like how it looks when it's like oh I don't know I don't know Everything wedding is so stressful. Actually, it's not. I don't know why I said that. I've had zero stress at all with this wedding. Anyway, books. Books. Also, the lighting here is terrible, by the way, because it is literally grey outside. It's horrible outside, but I wanted to film this today, so who cares? Right, okay. We're going to start with pink, because I don't think I've got much red. Oh, people are texting me. We've got an orange. Oh, by the way, guys, this book... Our Wives Under the Sea by Julia Armfield is the best book I've read so far this year. I adored this. So I've got a cat bed on top of here because I thought if I put the cat bed up there maybe Biscuit would sit on it, but he's actually shown no interest, so that can go over there. Not enough paint. What do you do when you're doing like colour? What do you do when one of the books is bigger than the others? Oh no. Oh no, I don't know. How does it work? Okay, let's keep all the tall ones on top for now and we'll come back to that. My Dark Vanessa by Kate Elizabeth Russell, also a great book. I've got this one, A Short History of Queer Women, but it's tiny. What do you do with tiny books? Again, I don't know. All right, I've got some purple, so I feel like they can also go up here. We go, I've got another tall one. These are both tall ones. Oh no, okay. Purple, I've got blue, let's just... Let's just start here. Another tall. If maybe if all of these are tall books, but they're all like pink or purple, maybe they can all go at the beginning. But that tall book's taller than the other tall books. Oh Jesus Christ! Maybe it's just gonna have to be more of like a vibe than like actual color categories. I just have to like make the vibe look good. I'll just go with that. And then do I mix non-fiction and fiction? That feels wrong. I feel like I shouldn't be mixing non-fiction and fiction. I haven't got much non-fiction, so maybe I'll take this downstairs and put it on my bookshelf downstairs. Because I think these two might be the only non-fiction ones I've got. I think. And then I've got all my Harry Potter books. How do I just say these? These are not aesthetic looking Harry Potter books. Also like fuck JK Rowling generally, but these are all from the 90s. So you can probably excuse me for having them in my collection. Um, my Deathly Hallows is probably my best condition Harry Potter book. Wait. Yeah, this is probably my best condition one and it is literally coming apart at the seams here. This is my Half-Blood Prince. These, the majority of these books were bought on the day they came out. I think from Prisoner of Azkaban onwards, I bought these the day they were released. So if these were in like pristine condition, imagine how much money they'd be worth. This one's held together by tape. That's just the cover of Goblet of Fire because the actual book is here. 
I cannot tell you how many times I have read these books. Like, I used to love them so much and I am heartbroken at JK Rowling being such a horrible, horrible excuse for a human being. These were just my entire childhood. My Chamber of Secrets book is probably actually my best, uh, alongside Deathly Hallows. I read this one the least growing up because I was terrified of the Basilisk. And this is literally a like, first edition prisoner, no? Philosopher's Stone. I wrote my name in it, wait, look. This is all held together by tape in the middle as well. Wild. This book when it came out was £5.99. Imagine finding a book for that cheap nowadays. Oh dear, this freaking hair. I don't know what to do with it. Anyway, what do I do with these books? Then I've got my Hunger Games series. Maybe I'm gonna have to have a shelf of like black books. Because I've got so many like thriller books and they're all black. I've got so many with like black or dark covers, so maybe they'll all go on there. Don't know how I'm feeling about the colour coordinating. I don't know, like, would I prefer to just have it in, like, queer books, thriller books, hardbacks, non-fiction? Maybe. That feels a bit, like, better in my brain. But I had a vision. I wanted, I wanted colour. This book, Private Peaceful by Michael Mopago, is one of my favourite books of all time. I love this book so much. And splitting it by colour means I'm splitting up all my Ashley Herring Blake books. Oh, I don't know what to do. This is more stressful than I... I anticipated, right. No, you know what? Scrap it. Scrap it. I'm doing it in categories. I don't care. I don't care if it's less aesthetic. I need, I need categorisation. Right. I was just so confused, so I was like, surely, surely I've got more books than this. I'm also just realising that this whole setup is a bit askew, but you know what, I'm on a time crunch. I have loads more books on my windowsill, and I have the books that are on like the invisible book holder bookshelf in the spare room, so we're going to get all them. That's more like it. These are all queer books. These are some random ones I just had on my windowsill because I didn't have anywhere else to put them. Right, okay. So what I've done, sapphic books on top, like psychological thrillers on the second one. Down the bottom I've got like just general like fiction and also gay fiction because I've got a lot of that as well but I wanted a whole shelf dedicated to my gals. But now I'm going to run out of space so I might have to like double stack them. Which could look quite cool to be fair, so I might do that. Some of these sapphic books like, I really wasn't a fan of, like Sorry Bro by Talim Cooney. I really did not like this book. And usually if I don't like a book, I will sell it on. But for the sake of my channel and like having the physical books to talk about, I feel like it's probably worth me keeping these, so I'll keep these for a bit longer. Iris Kelly doesn't date, I was wondering where this was. I was like, I've got Astrid Parker in Lila Green, but I don't have Iris Kelly. I almost want to display Lesbiana's Guide to Catholic School the wrong way around because look at these gorgeous sprayed edges. Amazing. My number one book of 2023, Andrew and Sandy were here by Johnny Garzavia. This book, beautiful. Another gorgeous cover, but a very mid book. This is If You Still Recognise Me by Cynthia So. It was fine, just wasn't my favourite thing in the world. I don't have space on this shelf for one more book, so I might put Felix Ever After up here, even though it isn't technically a sapphic book. It's still gay, so we can go up there until I start a second row on this one, because otherwise it's just gonna look lonely. In terms of decorating this, I do wanna get like a running plant down here, like a trailing plant, but for the moment, I'm just gonna put this lovely plant I've got here, this Monstera, with this plant pot that I got from Spitalfields Market last year. This is so pretty, I treated myself to it for my birthday. That can go there. Biscuit's outside the door screaming. Biscuit! Yeah, I know! Come here, Sunny. Oh, dearie. And that is my bookshelf for the moment. You just wanted me to pick you up. Why do you want to go down already?
Yeah, I think I'm going to keep that second bookshelf and I'll put it up at some point and have like two next to each other, but at the moment I just don't have enough books to fill it all. I need to get some more like thrillers. I always read thrillers on my Kindle, so I don't have many like physical copies. Do you want to go out again now? Go on then. No? You, you just want the door open. Okay, just give me two seconds, Biscuit. I don't really know what to do with this tiny book. Maybe we can just live on the end there. You can just live like that. And I now have my laundry basket back, because all my books are in here. In here I've got, oh, that's Biscuit. I have a kawaii cross stitch set. I have a hair clip, which is very handy, I'll keep that out. And I have an Ole and Steen gift voucher and a Harry Styles car freshener. So there you go. And a random note. I need to figure out what to do with the top of this. I feel like I could get some sort of like cat bed or something on top of it, but you know cats, as soon as I put a cat bed up there, they'll no longer sit on it. I'm so sorry, this has been wonky the entire video, hasn't it? Oops. Oopsie poopsie. I need a better tripod, but I can't afford one. Maybe one day. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this impromptu video. I'm going to sort out my hair. I think I've decided on the day instead of curls, because the problem is my hair doesn't hold curls. So they drop apart from this very bottom bit. So all of this is now straight, straight curl. Like it just straight at the top then curls randomly at the bottom. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna ask for waves instead. Had a brain wave, I'm gonna do that. Um, also I bought this top from Vinted. It's originally Zara and I thought it was gonna be like fitted and it's not, it's just baggy and weird. <sighs> but anyway, thanks for tuning in to this very chatty, very casual, impromptu video. I figured I might as well film it. Oh, aren't you the cutest boy? Yes, you are. Yes, you are. Right, bye from me and Biscuit. My phone's been buzzing this entire time on desk, so if you've heard buzzing, that's why.